Hold up, hold up, hold up. So I start every video with use proper safety equipment and always follow manufacturer's instructions. But what does that exactly mean? So in this video, we're gonna to touch base on a few safety precautions that you should take when you're working in the shop. Specifically, we're gonna to touch on the simple things like everyone knows, proper safety equipment, but also other things like proper wardrobe, working solo in a shop, uh, your shop setup and maintenance of your tools, um, learning the craft a little bit, and a little at the end, a touch for any of you like myself who have some little ones that like to spend some time in the shop and how you can make it a safer environment for them as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about safety equipment. Now, we all know that these should be worn all the time. One thing though, to make these safer for you and make it so you're not constantly taking them off and rubbing them off from them fogging up is I actually use what I would use on my scuba goggles. It's an anti-fog cream. And when you put that on here, it'll stop these from fogging up on you. And it'll stop you from making this turn from a safe equipment to something that could be dangerous. Also, have more than one pair of safety glasses. Constantly people are coming into the shop, you know, just wanting to see what you do or if you need an extra set of hands. And sometimes people forget to bring their own safety equipment. So always have an extra pair around so you can easily hand it to them. Okay, now I'll be honest, here's one I'm really bad at, ear protection. These are really good and I wear them pretty much when I'm running my router or some other heavier equipment. Um, to be honest, I probably should be wearing these throughout the time I'm running even my table saw or anything like that. Sometimes I'll just get the little insert ones, but they're not as comfortable for me. Um, even though these are big and bulky, they are very comfortable. And they actually even have a little jack um, that you can put a Bluetooth piece to and run some music if you really want to. Just make sure it's not distracting you. Another thing, respirators. Now, I actually have a few different kinds that I use during different applications. Like these ones, I use pretty much when I'm sanding or using particle. The filters are a little bit different compared to these ones that I use when I'm doing spray coats, clear coats, anything like that. It helps protect me a little bit more. Um, so just know the different types that you're using um, and make sure you're not just using them when you're overall just clear coating or anything like that. When you're sanding, um, say with your orbital sander or your belt sander, the dust collection system's not really working on that. So you're gonna put dust air particles into the air. You don't wanna breathe those in and get them into your lungs. Now it's good to have kids interested in woodworking and introduce them into the shop slowly on different tools and let them learn the techniques for themselves. But that being said, make sure that they have proper safety equipment that's sized properly for their smaller heads these are my daughter's safety equipment, and I've actually chosen to be pink because I want her to want to wear them. She thinks that this is the coolest thing when she comes in the shop, that she has her own safety equipment, and it's colored just for her. She loves it, and she knows the first thing she does when she comes in the shop is put her safety glasses on. Okay, when it comes to woodworking, there's also proper wardrobe that you should be wearing. You shouldn't be wearing any baggy material or anything like that. Now I know some people actually even say that you shouldn't even be wearing long sleeves because this can be dangerous as well. I work in a colder environment, so right now I even got the heat going on, but it's not completely warm in the shop. So I tend to still wear long sleeves. Um, you'll even see me wearing my vest sometimes. Um, one thing you can do though is pull these up as long as you're not creating a lot of bagginess. You can see this is still a tight fitting shirt and now I'm not exposing anything like that. Maybe my watch. Um, I do tend to take off my wedding ring as well when I'm doing woodworking just because it's something else that can grab. The watch I tend to keep on. It's something, you know, if you don't feel comfortable with, go ahead and take it off, put it away. Just make sure you set an alarm when you know those kids are getting off the bus. Okay, everyone knows it's technology age and a lot of people like to listen to music or if you're like me, sometimes you're taking phone calls and you're talking. So these hands-free headphones. Now I know they make the earbuds that are completely 
no cords or anything like that. But you can see this creates some danger as well as if I'm just dangling them here. So I constantly keep these tucked in. The cord is running inside my shirt so I don't have that hanging out. And when I'm not using them, I actually tuck this back inside my shirt. It's a bad habit of mine and I probably should either get the cordless ones or move away from them completely. But something to think about. Now everyone knows you wear your head backwards because it's cool, right? Actually, what your frontward hat can cause is when you're working on material, you can have debris that pops up and hits your bill. Now this could cause material to bop up and come down behind your glasses. So it is safer to take your hat around during different processes and it now it doesn't expose that gap to get through. Now that one that's created a little bit of debate in the woodworking world is gloves in the shop. I am one that tends not to wear gloves. I like to feel the material, know where my hand's at majority of the time. There's certain times I do wear gloves. When I'm bringing in rough material, um, say live edge stuff or anything like that, a good pair of leather gloves just to keep your hands away from splinters. I have my metal working gloves to protect my hands from that. That's something I will always wear gloves with. Um, and then lastly, your nitrile gloves. Just when you're staining, clear coating, or anything time you're using a solvent that might be damaging to your hands, it's good to put those on. Um, you get still a really good feel through them. Um, not as good as latex, but I like the nitro a little bit better. Um, and overall, it just protects my hands from getting exposed to any like acetones or paint thinners or xylene, xylene um, just different stuff like that. Another thing is when you have your shop set up, know where your location is at and where the nearest emergency facility is. Um, for my instance, I have an urgent care that's pretty close that actually is able to do stitches. Um, so you want to be aware of where those are because when it comes to any injury that might happen in the shop that you need help from outside, you want to be able to get there in a timely manner. You don't want to be panicking trying to find where it's at or anything like that. You just want to get there safely and be able to take care of the incident. Especially, you know, in woodworking, you can have a severe injury and you want to know right away what the plan is and how to act on it. No dangly objects, huh? What are these? So my keys on my belt are actually part of my safety plan. Um, majority of the time I work alone in the shop and that can be, you know, an added risk because in case an emergency happens, there's no one here to really help you. So um, luckily I have my neighbor right next door. His office is very close located to where the shop is. And occasionally I actually have to apologize, especially on planer day, if I have the big garage doors open, some of the noise. But the big thing is he knows I have my set of keys here with my panic button that will cause my truck outside horn to go off constantly and just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. I have a talk with him to let him know that if he hears this going off, that's probably an incident that I had, an emergency in the shop, and I need his assistance to come over. And um, I made him aware of this, asked him if he was okay with it, and he did it. So it's a good action plan to have, especially if you're all by yourself in the shop, you do not want an incident that you're laying on the floor and you can't get help. Now go on from planning, let's talk about the layout of the shop. First of all, fire extinguishers. I have fire extinguishers all throughout the shop because you never know where you're gonna be in case a fire happens. Okay, I know it might be a little messy right now because I've been using it quite a bit, but my solvents I actually keep in this metal cabinet. It's not fireproof or anything like that, but it's all in one location and it keeps it a little bit safer, especially if there's a fire, the fire department knows this is where flammable material is. Keep a first aid kit handy and visible in your shop. Make sure everyone knows where it's at and it's properly labeled as well as it never hurts to have a little cross for a prayer. Now, if you're lucky like me, you might have a fridge with a freezer in your shop. Um, one thing to keep there is a cooler of any size um, and some ice because 
let's face it, if there's a big emergency, you want to keep that piece on ice. Now, one thing that I've been lucky enough to have in both my shops is a dedicated panel to just my shop tools. Now I can come over here and kill the power to my table saw. So if one of the kids gets in here and they're fooling around with switches like they shouldn't be, there's no way that they can engage any saws. Now, another really cool thing that they've done on older tools is actually these little kill switch keys. Now, without this inserted in here, this switch is useless. So if you have children fooling around, this is another way to help the keep shop keep safe. Just don't lose them. Now let's face it, we're not always good about keeping our shops clean and debris free, especially from sawdust or anything like that. But a clean shop is a safe shop. Like having your walkway free and clear of any debris that could trip you. As well as keeping bins like this handy for when you're tearing apart those pallets or anything like that. Um, you wanna make sure the nails aren't ending up on your floor and in your foot or worse, your wife's car tire. Scrap wood, every woodworker has one, especially if you're like me and you don't ever throw any of them out. Keep a bin handy to keep them safe, secure, so they're not all over the shop. Now, when it comes to a clean shop, make sure that you're properly disposing of your rags or any material that you've used, um, say chip brushes or anything like that, especially if you're using something like a boiled linseed oil finish or anything like that. that rag that is soaked in that solvent is now highly combustible and it's very dangerous. So you want to make sure it's disposed of properly. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a dumpster fire. Now, another thing is knowing your tools and how to properly use them and proper setup. Um, that's talking about having proper guards, um, kill switches, as well as other you know, tools that help you use the tool, another tool safely. Like for instance, I got a dado set in my table saw right now. When I have to set this up, I cannot actually have the guard over top of this because I'm running pieces through that's not cut all the way through or anything like that. So you need to be safe when you're using this. Specifically, push blocks. Push blocks keep things safe. And I always keep them right here, easily in access of the table saw when I'm using it. But this push block isn't the safest to use in this instance. The better push block would be this one. It's got a little notch here to catch and help you push the material through, but it's got this whole piece here to help secure the piece down to the table so I don't get any lift off or anything like that. And I can safely make my cut without, you know, having a face full of wood. Now, if I don't have a dado blade set up in here, I always make sure at least I have one of this called riding knife. And what this does is it keeps back here. And as I cut the material and it's splitting open, this knife actually helps keep those two pieces from pinching together, grabbing the blade and causing kickback. So this is a must on your table saw whenever you're making a cut without say the dado. Another guard that you'll see, um, especially when people are videoing or doing like that, that they've removed is this overall guard piece. Um, when my kids are in the shop, I actually have this installed. Once again, it has that knife there to split the two pieces of wood, but it also has these two things that um, can come down with teeth and grab any material, stop it from kicking through. Lastly, it has this nice little shield guard. Now, as a piece is coming through, it pushes the guard up and allows the material to come through. And when it's done, it can release down and cover the blade. Well, it's not only just keeping your hands away from a spinning blade or anything like that, but also in the instance that kickback did happen, people don't realize your, your hand is on the piece of wood. Let me put this down. Grab a scrap piece here. So as I'm pushing a piece of wood through, and it would be maybe a larger piece than this because my hands wouldn't be this close. But if you get any type of kickback, what it can do is if this pinches over and the blade throws it back, your hand is on that material and it comes right over top of the blade. And now you've 
had a ser serious injury. If you have this type of guard on there, your hand would hit the guard and go over the blade. And the likelihood of a kickback happening with that in that instance and that drastic, pretty unlikely. All right, now let's also talk about using the proper tool for the technique or cut that you're trying to do. Like for instance, right here, I have my table saw. And really your table saw is made mostly for rip cuts. If you wanted to do a cross cut on this, you would want to build a cross cut sled. Or if you're a little old school like me, you know, get this thing out of the way. You notice in the background here, I actually still use a radio arm saw. Um, it's currently down because of the move, a couple pieces fell off of it and I have to reset it and calibrate it. But now that is a safe item uh, tool to use for your cross cut because the blade comes across and it's pushing material up against the fence and you can make cuts that are shorter than the length of the board safely on that. But if you do not have a radio arm saw and you're trying to do that on the table saw, make a cross cut sled. That's it. Or you can use this bad boy here, your miter saw. It's easy, safe to use. As long as you know how to use it properly, you can make a safe cross cut uh, on a piece of material with this as well. Now there's a whole bunch of other tools that are made in the shop to do different type of techniques. And I don't wanna dive into that too much um, because it's that's gonna be part of your process and learning woodworking and different techniques like that. The safest thing though I can tell you when it comes to a tool, if the cut feels uncomfortable or if you're a little nervous about it, um, it's probably something you shouldn't do and you should avoid it and go on to another way, a different way to do it that you feel comfortable and safe doing. Well, I hope this was a helpful video for you and I hope you learned a little bit of something because if you can take away one thing from this video, that just made your shop that much safer. So always just remember, respect the tool, know the tool and use it properly, as well as protect yourself with proper safety equipment and read manufacturer's labels so you know how to properly dispose of, maintain, and do anything in the shop properly. Because as we all know, it's safety first, safety last, safety always. All right, that wraps this one up. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for buzzing by.